This is me, carrying my main telescope to my mount one final time for a long while. And I am so happy. After nine years in the hobby, I have finally achieved one of my main dreams, having my equipment remotely hosted under dark desert skies. In this video, I will show you how I installed my telescope and how I can now use it from anywhere in the world remotely. We'll be driving three hours away to Udro, a brand new remote observatory under dark Utah skies. Come with me. So right now I am at a motel, which is the only one like within miles over here. So uh, there is nobody here today. So I called the owner and I'm waiting for her to come over and give me the keys um, just for one night. Hopefully she gets here fast and then I will go right away to install the equipment at the observatory. I am very, very cold. So I'm going to wear really warm clothes and then we can go finally install everything. Very, very exciting. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Oh, and by the way, this is the room. Pretty nice. I think I'm the only one here tonight. Super cool. It was about $75 for one night. The location is three hours away from my home and I arrived there around 5 p.m. There isn't much going on around that area which is perfect for an observatory. I met the owner, Craig, and did a full interview with him about how a remote observatory works and how to get started. That video will be on this channel in a few weeks, so be sure to watch it as it is very interesting. Okay, so I have arrived. It is very cold and very windy right now, but behind me you can see the actual observatory and it's magnificent. I just went inside and it's beautiful. There is an office where you can uh, chill a bit and uh, yeah, it's very nice, it's very well done and very impressive and I cannot wait to put my scope in there tonight. So I'm going to uh, take the stuff out of the car right now and we're going to install our telescope in right now. Let's do it. This right here is what pulls the roof. It opens up all the way on these rails to here. So here is the office where you can um, if you want to use a microwave or fridge and uh, take care of your adapters and all that. It's a nice decorated office with a bunch of space pictures and bathroom if needed. And here is where you can store your cables and adapters if you need. It. And then we'll go inside the main section here, which will be this right here. And here is where the magic happens. Wow, well, it looks really cool. And you can see all the piers here. Ooh, we've got some red lighting if needed. And so here are the piers, you guys, you guys cannot really see, but I'll show you later when, there is, uh, when it's open, but there is 18 piers in this building here, and the roof is going to open very soon. It was now time for me to set up all my gear. It almost felt emotional because I've been picturing this moment in my head for a long time. I was very paranoid to have forgotten something at home, but luckily I brought everything I needed. And here comes the final piece, the telescope. Craig had to help me because the pier extension makes the dove plate very high, and so it is difficult to attach a scope on there. I then attached the cables and made sure it wouldn't get stuck anywhere. 
The rig was perfectly balanced on the first try, which never happened before. Maybe it's a sign it's all going to go very smoothly. Alright guys, so everything is now set up. As you can see here, the telescope is at its own spot and uh, I have a dew heater here. First time using a dew heater in my life, just in case for winter nights, as well as one on the guide scope here. And then um, this cable management is kind of scaring me, but hopefully we'll find a way to make sure that the cables don't get stuck ever. So when you have one cable going down, this will go away once I pull our line, but this sleeve has four cables in it, and it is the only one going down, it's just, I don't know if it's long enough. We're about to open the roof and uh, try the first light from this location. Very exciting. The sun went down, and it was now time to open up the roof, to let the thousands of stars shine over the telescope. All right, let's open it. Wow, that's crazy. I pull our line and then got ready to aim at my target. Something terrible almost happened on the very first loop. The big filter wheel pushed the cable to one side and it almost ripped the USB port on the camera. So Craig and I fixed that cable issue using a zip tie on the dovetail. Then, we slewed the telescope in every possible direction to ensure the cable could no longer get stuck. So one of the rules that you have to follow uh, for these observatories is that you cannot have like so much light uh, going on around your scope. So for example, in my case, I have this bright light from the moonlight focuser that I'm going to uh, hide with black tape, which is great. Um, that way no one has you know, those annoying lights um, giving light leak to everyone around you and I think I have this light and maybe like my nuke light um, right here and that's pretty much it so I'll just cover this with black tape and we'll be good to go all right I'm about to take my first light from here very exciting I cannot wait uh, I'm going to be imaging the double cluster and see what happens and you Craig what are you imaging right now right now the telescope in the big observatory is on M33, and the little observatory is on the North American Nebula. Exciting. So I guess we'll see his images in this video too. I had to go to the scope several times throughout the night because of random issues. I then went back to the motel and left the telescope do its thing all night. I had more random issues with my rig, so I had to go back the next day to try and fix these. I finally went home, but I still have to go yet again to fix the last piece of issues, which I will talk about now. So I am stuck at in and out but the need to image is strong. So hopefully we can connect to the telescope from here. Perfect! Here is Nina, and we are now officially imaging super nice super cool
So on my last week using the telescope at home here, I made the mistake of pixel peeping and saw a tiny bit of tilt on one corner. And I'm very stupid, I tried to fix it and I made it like 10 times worse. Right now my scope is under amazing skies, but there are still, you know, there's still a crazy amount of tilt. So I'm gonna have to go back there ASAP and try to fix it. So here you can see in this image I took that night, uh, it's only like two or three hours worth, but uh, at first glance it's fine, but if you zoom in you can see how bad the tilt is. And if you remove the stars, um, you can see like so a bunch of reflections on top, on the bottom. I mean, it's insane. So that's pretty bad. Um, and then the last issue I've been having is uh, my mount kept disconnecting. So luckily, Craig has some family on site and I was able to text them and ask if they could help out with finding out the issue with the cabling and all that. So they were able to fix um, that power issue. And maybe I might also buy some you know, a tilt adapter online and uh, and try to fix this tilt once and for all because it's such a waste to have a telescope under such amazing skies and have so much you know tilt ah it's tilt is the bane of my existence i hate tilt so much it almost made me quit astro so many times in the past years so anyway i have to fix it and then lastly guys so if you want to have your telescope uh, remotely like mine now um, you can go ahead and contact craig uh, i will have his email address in the uh, description below. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask him right away or uh, in the comments as well. You can also go on the Utah Desert Remote Observatory website. There's a bunch of info there and uh, you'll be able to have a, a contact form and you can ask questions. But yeah, I really, really love uh, this place. Uh, everyone is so awesome there and I can really vouch for them. So uh, if you want to have your scope next to mine there, uh, go ahead and contact Craig or you can also contact me if you want. I'll answer any questions. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll have many images that are going to be awesome from there. And also some new content, like some interesting videos uh, about how to do remote imaging, for example. So uh, good stuff ahead. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time and class guys.